Folks, I'm doing a tutorial here. I'm trying to, a, a guy asked a question about the structure of GoPro videos. And yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm gonna show you something here. Here's some video that I shot down in Red Springs driving around. And uh, I have converted this video already. I want you to see kind of what happens. When you shoot with a GoPro Hero 3, it breaks it down into these four gig, roughly four gig files. That's the limitation of what the little SD cards will record. So it's a highly compressed sort of file, MP4, that it shoots. And so you end up with a four gig file. Let's say you shoot a long continuous, you go out, you out shooting for an hour. This is a driving video where I was shooting for about an hour. And you can see the length of these are 17.25, 17 minutes, 25 seconds. So what it'll do, it'll do 4721, like that's my first file. Then the next one will be one. 4721. It's odd the way it does this. The next one will be 24721 and 34721. This can sometimes be a little aggravating. It'll say you do two different drives. And I have an ex example over here of another file I did driving in Indian country. I call this. Here's Cam 2 Center where I drove some in the morning and some in the evening. Look at this. See, I got 4719 and 4720. You'd think it'd be this one, this one, right? No, it's not. This was shot later in the day. This was shot starting at 12.02. This was shot 10.54. So really what it is is 47.19, then 147.19, then 247.19, and 347.19, and, and so forth. So, you know, when you go stitching these things together, because this gentleman's asking me, why, why didn't it shoot one long video? Well, it doesn't because of the limitations of your file, uh, the file saving on your SD card. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a couple of these, so let's say I want to do stitch these two together. Ah, oh, darn it. I'm going to hit that and hit the control key. And so now I've got 147.19, 247.19. I'm going to pull those over here into the GoPro Studio. And let's see if it'll import. And it did, it looks like. I'll pull that aside. So I could, here's one of the downsides to using this GoPro Studio. This is why I use Premiere Pro. If I pull these native files into Premiere Pro, I can go ahead and pull them into a sequence and start editing them. Now, I will say this, the codec that, that this converts this to, see GoPro, it forces you to go into their Cineform codec. You can't just start, start editing, go into step two and start editing here, at least to my knowledge you can't. Let's see, we'll do a blank template and say create. And see, I have no media over here. Why? Because I've not converted. So I'm going to go back to import and convert again. And here we have these unconverted files. These are the 3.8 gig files that need to be converted into the Cineform codec. Now, we'll say this. Cineform codec is a superior codec. It's great codec to be shooting or to be editing with because you have such uh, control over the richness of color. What I'm going to do here though, I'm not going to I'm not going to convert this because what will happen if I convert these 3.8 gig files, they'll turn into almost 20 gig files. It just unlocks all the color potential that's inside this piece of video. So I'm going to pull to the end of this and I'm going to do an endpoint here. So all this dark grade out here will not appear in the video. And I'm just going to, I'm going to convert this last little bit of this one. Then I'm going to, I think I, did I pull the right one in there? Is this 4719? I don't know which one I've got. I mean, I pulled the wrong one in. Okay, 24719. Okay, so I'm going to pull the beginning of this one in. So let's see, I'm going to go this. This one is, aha, I didn't do that right. So this, this is the first one. I'm going to pull this all the way to the end. And we're going to get, I'm going to put an end point here. I'm going to get just this last little bit of this video. Then I'm going to go to this one. And I'm going to get the first little bit of this one. And all I'm trying to show my friend is that these videos do stitch seamlessly together. If you convert the entire one, let's say you have five videos and you've got them in the right sequence. If you convert all of them and then go to step two, it will work. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I've got this one. I've got the very end of this video. I've got the very beginning of this one. So they, we're going to see if it seamlessly will stitch these together. I just don't want to go through the whole conversion process of rendering out 17 minutes of video. We'd be here for a while. So what is the next thing you do? Well, you go to advanced settings. And this is, you know, you can see what I've got. I've got 1080p video, 1920 by 1080. So I've got that selected here. Frame rate 47.952. And I've done that here. Uh, you can change these if you want to. You can go down to 24 frames per second, whatever. I'm going to stay with what I've got. I like to export the files at MOV. I just rather work with a QuickTime type format than AVI. You can choose AVI. Really, it doesn't matter for the most part. Medium quality, that works just great. I mean, you could go to low quality, still better than what you've got 
the native file here, but medium is, is good. I'm going to stay with medium. And to help to remember settings, okay. I'm going to make sure it's going to the right directory. I chose these from 2014, 815, Indian Country Driving. I'm down in the Native American country on this. So I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to convert to that uh, root folder. I'm not going to go in here and mess up anything that I might have already previously converted. I'm going to say okay. So I'm gonna, I know where I'm going to go to. Don't forget this part here, or you'll end up losing your files. Now I'm going to add uh, both of these files. I've got to select both of them. Ah, darn it. Hold my shift key down and get both of them. They're both gray. Add to conversion list, and I'm going to say convert all. So I'm just converting, what, 23 seconds of this one, 15 seconds of this one. So it shouldn't take too long to do this. Once again, uh, the Cineform codec is truly a great, great codec. If you want to get the absolute most out of your GoPro Hero 3, the truest depth of color and everything, uh, you'll go ahead and go through this conversion. It's probably worth it to do it. I just personally, myself, am fairly happy with what I get going straight with the native files without having to go into conversion, without having to make them humongous. And I like to go into W Premiere Pro. That's why I'm sort of a, yeah, my Premiere Pro snob. Uh, you can go ahead and call me that. But this is free software we're using here from GoPro, and that's why I'm trying to do this, this tutorial. So once those are both converted, we go to step two to edit, uh, right? So we can see here, here's, here's our video. Let's see if it seamlessly comes together here if we watch this. So I'm going to turn this audio down a little bit so it doesn't just drive us nuts. So let's see what's going to happen here when we get to that seam. Look, we, went, we rolled across the seam, and there was nothing, was there? Now this is, once again, I'll, I'll give props to uh, GoPro. If you want to go here and you want to change your exposure, you're going to change your contrast somewhat. Let's say I wanted to underexpose that, but I want to change the contrast up. I mean, there's just, there's just the saturation is, oh, it's outstanding, man. If you want to go here, the, uh, the temperature, maybe you want it to be a little warmer, a little cooler. Um, sharpness, you can go ahead and affect, affect the sharpness, and it really does affect the sharpness well. You know, one of the things people have said about the GoPro Hero 3 Plus, which this is a Hero 3 Plus, is, oh, it doesn't seem to be sharp enough, it doesn't be sharp enough. Well, if you go into the codec, you can go from blurry to sharp, look at that. I mean, man, there's plenty of sharpness there, it's just how much sharpness do you want to add to it. If you want to zoom in on some of these videos, like say I don't want the, the, the hood of my truck there in there, I know you're, I'm adding artificial pixels by doing that. So I might decide not to do that, you know, but, but anyway, you, you can do that. So there's, there's a whole lot of good you can do. Uh, we can frame these things horizontal or vertically. Uh, I don't know if I, I don't know how much I want to mess around with that, but you see what I'm doing here. Okay. And it should be a place to reset all of these things. There used to reset all. We could do that right there. Are you sure want to reset all? I'll say yes. We'll reset. Look how dull it is. And you know, once again, I think, you know, some saturation, a little bit of contrast on that helps. I think the exposure looks pretty good. Temperature, I'm going to go bent down just a little bit with that. And that looks quite nice to me. So now I've, I've done that with this one. Uh, okay, so now we go over here to this one. And we could probably do about the same sorts of things, couldn't we? I wonder if it would let me uh, copy. And folks, you have to forgive me. I don't work in this a whole lot. If I could copy the very same settings, I'm going to try to remember what I did. I'm going to, I'm going to up the saturation a little. I'm going to up my contrast just a bit. Somebody may be really smart fart and know how to copy those uh, those settings from one to the other. I know I probably did sharpen it a bit. So there we go. We got our sharpness. Let's go back over. Did I do sharpening on this one? I'm going to sharpen this one a little bit more. So there we go. So now we've got two pieces of video that should work pretty well together. I see that one's a little brighter than the other, isn't it? Let's do a little more exposure here, maybe just a little bit more saturation. And now they'll be pretty seamlessly together. And what may have, I, I could have perhaps have selected both of those. I'm holding the shift key down and seeing if I can. Now that makes you do one at a time, doesn't it? Well, that's odd. There has to be some way that I can save a look here. And, you know, forgive me if I'm not being the guru that I ought to be on this, <laughs> but there you go. You do, you are able to greatly affect the color uh, settings and the whole lot of stuff that you do with the GoPro in GoPro Studio. Perhaps even better than I can do it in Premiere Pro, I would say. Certainly, probably that is the case. I am, see here again. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead to step three, which is export. And here's where you have to make your decision, you know, what are you going to do with this? Well, most of the time we're going to go to YouTube. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do a YouTube, and it's going to give me the frame rate here. Now, you know, I, I can go ahead and do custom. You know, probably for this piece of video, since YouTube prefers 30 frames per second, I could go ahead and change that to 30 frames per second. It's not really going to hurt. It's still going to look great. 12 megs per second. I like to go about 16 megs per second. We're staying in H.264. This is just me doing my little video. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, say export. And I hope we're exporting still to the same folder. However, it gives us the option of where to go. So I'm going to say computer. And I'm going to go to my book. And I'm going to go down here to engine country driving. And we'll call this uh, sample. And what we're going to do, we're just going to test and make sure that this looks good. Uh, and that it was seamless. So what we're doing, once again, if we had rendered every bit of this, all 17 minutes of this one, 17 minutes of this one, 17 minutes of the one before it and the one after it, then we could have, you know, an hour long plus video, couldn't we? And so that would work just fine. Folks, one bit of apology I want to make when I was trying to create, the, make the two looks uh, match a while ago. I don't know why I'm so stupid, but I could have gone over here to presets and just said add, right? I'm click, I've clicked on this one over here. And so if I, want, if I want this one to match this one, what I really had to do is say this Tony preset. Ah. Preset one, we'll call it, and I'll say add, right? And then I should have that preset in here now, right? Tony preset one, look at this. Now I can go to this one. And I could have said, let's make it Tony preset one. And there you go. And now those two would have matched just perfectly. So my bad. I didn't render this out right. So my example will not look exactly the way we want it to look. But let's 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 take a look at sample here that I made. I'm going to go ahead and just open it up. And so here we are. We're in Windows Media Player now. And check it out. It's going to go by. And yes, we should have a seamless piece of video. I know you're watching this at... 10 frames per second because I'm doing this with, uh, uh, what is this program called, Snagit. So Snagit doesn't do the best job in the world with this. But you see, you got a seamless piece of video from those two pieces of video. So don't be put off by the fact that your GoPro Hero 3 records your long videos into segments. They can all be stitched together just perfectly, flawlessly, actually. And you'll end up with splendid pieces of video. If, and, you know, if you don't want to buy a, a, a premium program like Premiere Pro, which I subscribe to, I'm a big time supporter of them, then you can certainly do most everything you want to do right out of the free program you can get from GoPro, GoPro Studio. Hope this helps, folks. Subscribe if you like. Sorry, I kind of wound around a little bit on this one, but hopefully this helps someone. Peace.